Hi, I'm Rob Isseling and I'm going to tell you in this video about the bulk synchronous parallel model, which is the model I use in my book on parallel scientific computation. And the model is a model of parallel computing. And then you can ask, what is a parallel computer? Well, here you see a, a supercomputer with 8 million cores, processors. A, a parallel computer is a set of processors that work together in solving a computational problem. And today, parallel computers are everywhere. In your smartphone, it may, it may have eight cores, eight processors, but also in laptops, desktops, and the parallel supercomputer that we just saw. Today, it's difficult to make a single processor faster. So if you want to increase the speed of a computer, then you need to use more processors. So in, uh, in this model, we have an abstract model of the parallel computer, and that's the bulk synchronous parallel computer, the BSP computer, which you see. And uh, it consists of a set of processors, the P of processor, with memories, the M of the memory, uh, and they are all connected by a communication network. And this is, uh, is a model that was proposed by Leslie Valiant in 1989. So a BSP computer is a distributed memory computer because you see every processor has its own memory. And uh, uh, there's a penalty to be paid if you access the memory of a different processor. So it's faster to get access to your own memory. And uh, we can design algorithms for this abstract computer. And the advantage of having an abstract model of a computer is that then you can run it on many different parallel computers in practice. In the model, we also have a model of an algorithm. And an algorithm consists of a, of a sequence of super steps, big steps in which you either compute, where you see five processors that compute. They don't take all the same time, but then they wait for each other, they synchronize, and then they continue. You can also have uh, a phase where processors communicate with each other. Uh, you see the arrows uh, in the first uh, communication super step, because we call them super steps, these big steps. Uh, the processor zero communicates with all the others. And in the last one, they return the favor. So uh, since it is difficult to, uh, to think in parallel, we try to limit the amount of parallelism by keeping it within a single super step. Here we see a communication pattern, actually two patterns, and uh, we want to assign a cost, a, a time that this takes. And we call that an H relation. An H relation is a communication super step in which processors send and receive, but at most H data words. So in the, on the left side, you see processor zero sends a data word to processor one and also a data word to processor two. So here's a question to you. What is the H of the H relations shown on the left and on the right. Well, you may have thought about uh, this. Uh, in both cases, the H equals 2, because what we saw on the left, every processor receives at most one element, but processor 0 sends two elements, and that's the maximum number either sent or received. And with the picture on the right, we have that both uh, th that all three processors uh, have a sending and a receiving of a data word to each of the other processors. So uh, everybody sends two, everybody receives two. So we have two different patterns. But in both cases, we have the same H. And this H determines the time that it takes to communicate. And we consider the time to be linear 
in the number of data words that uh, are being sent or received. So that number is h. And then it depends on the machine that you have, what the time per data word is. The time, we also call it the cost. Uh, time is money in this case. Uh, the cost of sending one data word is g. And the g comes from the word gap, the gap between two different data words that are being sent. So h times g. But we also have a fixed cost. That's the cost for the, the global synchronization. And uh, this, this you pay that for a super step, whether it's a communication or computation super step. You always have to pay this uh, fixed cost. Uh, the computer that I have on my uh, desktop uh, at uh, Utrecht University, where I work, uh, I measured it. And uh, I wanted to know, what is the G of this computer? And you see the G is uh, 311 flops, meaning that it can that the computer, in the time that it sends a data word, it could uh, perform 311 floating point operations, uh, such as an addition or a multiplication. I have uh, four processors, p equals 4, in this computer. And uh, the speed of the computer is 8 gigaflops, meaning 8 billion flops per second. So that's quite some, uh, quite some speed. Uh, the cost of a super step then uh, is something like 16,000 flops. So you don't want to have too many super steps uh, because the synchronization can be expensive. Then what is the cost of a computation super step? Well, uh, as you saw, some processors have more work than others. The processor that has the maximum, the maximum number of flops, W, is the processor that uh, uh, determines the time of a super step. So the time equals w plus again the l of the synchronization. OK, so when we have an algorithm, we can add up all the costs. And then we get a, a formula of the form a plus bg plus cl, where the a represents the computation time, the bg the communication time, and the cl the synchronization time. OK, to summarize, a BSP computer can be characterized by just four parameters. P, the number of processors. R, the computing rate in flop per second of a single processor. G, the communication cost per data word. And L, the global synchronization cost. And then the model has three parts, the BSP model a distributed memory architecture, a framework for the algorithm, because it, uh, it consists of a sequence of super steps, and also a cost model, which can help us and predict the time an algorithm takes. And this, uh, this is an expression of the form A plus BG plus CL. Finally, I have a question for yourself, because now that you know the BSP model, uh, you can think of a BSP algorithm for computing the sum of a thousand numbers on a BSP computer with 10 processors. How would you do that? And then you have to take care that the, every processor does its fair share, and only one processor is responsible for the final result. So processor zero, for example, could have the final results. And then you should give an expression of the form A plus BG plus CL for the cost of the algorithm. And the answer to this question is available on my website with supplementary material for the book. There's a PDF file with answers to the final questions of my videos.